Well, welcome to Moments That Matter. I'm Stanley Kelly, pastor of Fellowship Baptist Church, here with Mr. Curtis Harmon himself. And we are ready to jump back into the epistle of 1 John Curtis, excited about our study uh, together today. And we are entering in upon the week before Easter. Yep. And so this coming Sunday, we'll be celebrating the resurrection of Christ, of course, which is, which is, um, you know, before that we have the, the death burial. And so we're, I mean, just in a particular way, celebrating the, the gospel, you know, this weekend. So very, very excited, kind of a, kind of a highlight of yep. the Christian year. And good so, time. Yeah. Praise God for all of that. If, uh, if you don't have a, a good Bible believing church to attend here in the Goldsboro area, we would sure would love to extend an invitation to you to be part of our Easter services this coming Sunday morning. And uh, we, we're looking forward to having a great time in the Lord. Uh, well, Curtis, we're, we're back here in 1 John chapter 5, and today we're just going to look at verse number 6. There's a lot to unpack in this one verse, and the, the title of today's lesson is The One That Matters. And we could just kind of put an exclamation point on the, on the back end of that. Jesus Christ is the only one that matters. What He says matters. You know, it's, you know His Word is, is absolute truth. He speaks the truth. He is the truth. And so, you know, if if you bypass Jesus, you bypass everything. Uh, Isn't that what John's trying to tell us too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is the Christ. Yeah, yeah. He's everything. He's, he's the, the Son one. of God. He's the Christ. And so if you miss him, you've you've missed you've missed it all. So let's read verse number six together. The Bible says, This is he, of course, speaking of, of Jesus, the Son of God, from verse number five. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. And then there's an explanation given, Curtis, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Uh, John is wanting to make sure that we understand in this text that there is ample evidence, there is ample testimony given to the identity of Jesus Christ. In other words, this isn't something that that John or the preceding, you know, earlier apostles, as far as their martyrdom is concerned, we're, we're assuming John is the only living apostle at this time, but none of the apostolic man, John is saying, none of us have just grabbed this out of thin air. This isn't a, a product of human ingenuity or imagination. There is, uh, there is divine credence, divine testimony on the identity of Jesus Christ. And so really verse number six is a verse to be grappled with. I mean, there is, there is so much truth and, and Curtis, as I began uh, preparing just for our, our little discussion here, I was, I was really astonished at the amount of varying interpretations that are, are given to this one verse. We, we don't have time to examine all of those uh, different, you know, opinions and, and viewpoints. I, I would just simply say that the most logical conclusion and, and consistent among conservative, you know, theologians uh, would be that, that verse number six, uh, speaking of the water and the blood, that the water would be indicative of the baptism of Christ, whereas the blood would be uh, representative of the death of Christ. And so we, we know at the baptism of Christ, you have this divine testimony from the Father given of His Son. This is my beloved Son. And you have the Spirit descending upon Jesus uh, in that particular instance. And so at the outset of Jesus' earthly ministry, at His baptism, there is divine testimony given to His identity. And then, you know, going all the way through and on the back end, some three, three and a half years later, at the death of Christ, you have even more ramped up divine testimony given as to the identity of 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 Jesus Christ. That that again, he's not just he's not just Jesus, but he is Jesus the Christ. He is the Messiah, the Anointed One. He is the Son of God. Uh, and so, uh, as far as testimony there at at the death of Christ, I mean, wow, you have. You have the earthquake, you have dead men walking around, the saints, you know, uh, some of them walking around. You have the veil of the temple being rent in twain. Uh, you have, you have uh, men like the Roman soldier who are exclaiming, truly this was the Son of God. Everything that was going on was enough to convince a man like that 
that, that this is no ordinary person. He is uh, the, the Son of God. And so the baptism and the death are kind of like the bookends on the ministry of Christ. And each of those bookends are exclaiming to the world uh, about the identity of who Jesus Christ really is. So in both events, the Father is testifying of His Son. John's statement here also, Curtis, in verse number 6, would refute a heretical view of the Gnostics, which were just a, a, <laughs> they were a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> and there was a lot of variance in, in what they believed and, and extreme forms of it. But the Gnostic, a certain branch of Gnosticism in John's day taught that at the baptism of Jesus, the Spirit of Christ descended upon Jesus and stayed with Him up until, just prematurely until, it was time for Jesus to be crucified. And before Jesus was crucified, the Spirit of Christ was lifted off from Jesus. And so essentially you have just a man, just a human, just the humanity of Jesus actually dying. They were there. I guess it was some attempt to safeguard the fact that God can't die or, or, or however they rationalized that, that certain belief system. But, but in, in either way, the Gnostics taught that, that Jesus was only a man. There was no deity involved in his, in his death. So John is coming alongside here in verse number six and saying, not so. Uh, it is, it is his water. It, it was at the water and the baptism and at the death of the, the blood of Christ where Jesus is the Christ. He is the son of God. He has not, he has, he has never not been the Christ, never not been the, the Son of God. And you really see the attention there given to it, verse number 6, where John says, not by water only. In other words, not just at the outset of his ministry, but by water. And, and it's like John highlights or he underscores in, in bold here. He's like taking a Sharpie and, 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 he, and he just puts the emphasis on and blood. Not, not just water, not just at the beginning of his ministry, but at his death, at the end of his of his ministry. And so the, the father, John says, gives ample testimony of Jesus, not just at his baptism, but also at his death and even thereafter. And then, and then he just one more note here, Curtis, and, and we'll see where you want to go with this. Uh, John, John finishes verse number six, and it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. And so we have the witness, and this will be enlarged upon in, in verses seven and eight, but we have the witness that the testimony of the Spirit of God as well. And, and there's a lot of different ways of looking at that. You have the, the Spirit's testimony through the Word of God that that is God-breathed and holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost of God. But you also have that personal, individual enlightening of the Spirit of God where you and I are convinced of the identity of Jesus, uh, the fact that He's the Christ, the fact that He's the Son of God. And Curtis, that, that would tend to special revelation, something that God does not do for everyone, but He does only for those who would believe. Uh, and, and the Baptist Confession of Faith captures that when, when we read that it is, uh, it is by the work of, of the Word and the Spirit only that, that God is effectually revealed to us. Man, there's a lot in verse number 6. Yeah, first of all, speaking to the Gnostics there, I thought about something, you know, Jesus said he had power to lay it down. Yeah, his, right. His life. Yeah. You know, we we don't need a, a a made up way for him to be able to die. Yeah, and right. still be the son of God. He said, "I have power and to take it up again. and to take it up again." Yeah. And so that's no exactly language. what he did. He didn't yeah. need some extra thing to happen for him to be able to to die. Uh, sure, men killed him. I guess men, you know, um, Peter told him in action, you, know, "You killed the Prince of Life." Sure, there's a there's a human side to it, but. Jesus laid his life down willingly. He, yeah. he, he had the power to do it. And then speaking of the spirit there, you think about the spirit's role in Jesus's life. Yeah. Starting at the baptism, just like you said. And I love how John says that that, that spirit is who, who bears witness. Um, you know, we could say the spirit's job is to reveal truth. Yeah. Right. And John said the spirit, um, because the spirit is truth. So he's to guide us into all truth. He's the one that decides if something's true or not. Yeah. Right. Reveals. Yeah. We can, we could say something's truth that isn't truth, yeah. but the Spirit reveals if it's truth or not. Yeah. And so when John makes this statement about the water and the blood, he says the Spirit is the one that you can trust. Yeah, that's right. He's the one revealing, revealing that truth. Yeah. And again, the overwhelming theme just being that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. That he is the Christ. Yeah. 
He's the one. Yeah. You know, and the spirit bears truth. Uh, I love that, how, how he draws that together. And you think about his theme, what what his theme has been to show. And I love your, your attention there to like the Roman soldier there. That's exactly what he changed his mind about. What yeah. he repent, what he said, what he exclaimed was that Jesus was the son of God. Yeah. Is exactly what John said here in verse number four. Yeah. It's exactly what he said in verse one. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Yeah. It's exactly what happened there. Yeah. So I love that. I, I, one of the things that's so interesting to me about that, that entire world when we were talking about the, the uh, Roman soldier, you know, we have his testimony, and I'm sure there were others, but there were, there were also others who witnessed those same things, and they don't come away with the same conclusion. And you know, so you have to wonder, like, what's going on in in people's life who would reject that sort of a testimony that obviously God is giving, you know, to those who are involved. But then you would also have to think simultaneously, just hand in hand, uh, what about those people that were sitting in the same church service you were when when God was dealing with you? And, and, you know, conviction was wrought in your heart and, and God drew you to himself. It was the same message being preached. They heard the same truths. Uh, so, so, you know, humanly speaking, I understand the, the divine, I, I want to understand the divine work and, and, and how God, you know, his, his spirit and the father drawing people to be saved. And, you know, we, we get into discussions on election and predestination, all those kinds of things. But from our perspective, humanly speaking, uh, the book of Romans chapter 1 speaks to that very thing where it says that there are men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And, and holding it, the, the idea is, is it's not like they're, they're holding the truth in their hand or like we, we have the Bible and, and I hold it in, our, in my hand. But it's like they're holding it back. It literally means to suppress. They are suppressing the truth. It's like a, a child, uh, not my child because... You know, <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know what we're allowed to say on the Internet, but no. But, you know, some children, you know, like, like their parents are giving them instruction and they're like sticking their fingers in their ears and, you know, la, 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 you know, kind of stuff. There's a way to fix that, yeah. <laughs> by the way. But they're suppressing, you know, that they, they don't want to interact with the truth. And that would be true for those other soldiers, anybody else in that situation. It's not that they didn't have that same testimony being given to them. They just didn't. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They do not want to come to the light. They suppress the truth. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. They won't allow it to do the work that it needs to perform in their life. And Curtis, honestly, all of us are like that. The, the difference is the Spirit's effectual work in the heart of the believer. Yeah, I love it. I mean, we, we could, it's great coming up for Easter, but you know, the, you think about the gospel, yeah. you know, you think about Christ dying on the cross there and that Roman soldier witnessing that. You know, there's somebody like him who participated maybe in, in, in the death yeah, of Christ. Sure. There's others standing by that are not participating, but maybe they're under conviction. Maybe there's folks that weren't under conviction, all of a sudden they were. Maybe there's folks that weren't under conviction for a long time. We could say that's true for our day. Yeah, right. In yeah. church, you yeah. know, this Sunday, there may be people that have been under conviction for a while. There may be safe people who are out of fellowship with God yeah. that need to be under conviction. Yeah. But the, the gospel, Christ dies on the cross. Yeah. The gospel is the power. Uh, Paul said it's the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, so, so whoever, whatever, it works for everybody. <laughs> if, if the word of God, what we're reading in John doesn't lead to salvation. Yeah. What's right. the point? Whatever yeah. we believe about all these other terms, repentance, justification, propitiation, if they don't lead to salvation, yeah, right. we've, yeah. we've missed it. That's right. We've missed the mark. Yeah. So I love it. It's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Amen. thank you for tuning in today to Moments of Matter. And we pray God will bless you today.